everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And it's a busy one today. Obviously, we had a couple of quiet ones, so it's a busy one today. So bear with me, we've got a lot to get in. And this, by the way, is why I do it later on Fridays, because so much has been announced on Friday. Imagine if I'd have done it in the morning. I would, I'd have missed it all and wouldn't have been able to speak about it until Monday. And obviously, I've had to try and cram all the weekend stuff in there as well. Uh, so I did get a message, actually, just, just now as I'm starting to record it, um, off Andy Brown saying, no video today it's always going to be a little bit later on Fridays and this is exactly why because Fridays I want to get all the Friday stuff in as well as some of the Thursday stuff so then on, when I do it on Monday I've not missed it all um, but yeah like I said quite busy and of course the main story is that Burnley have their first signing of the summer Sharandi Sambo is now officially a claret he joins from PSV Eindhoven yeah um, after his, his contract with them recently expires. He is Dutch. He is under-21 <laughs> international sorry, for the Netherlands. So it comes with, you know, he's a young, exciting prospect with a decent bit of pedigree. He's done quite well to get to, obviously, the... The, the Netherlands under-21 side is now a Burnley player. It's official. It's not just rumours anymore. It's bang on 100% official. The club have announced it. He is our first signing of the summer. But to be fair, we've known about it for quite a while. I think Fabrizio Romano tweeted it for the first time in around February, March sometime. And I've even spoke about it myself on a couple of these shows now saying it's going to get done soon. I'm surprised it's been done in June because the contract usually expires, doesn't it, on, on the end of the 30th of June and then all the new ones start on the on the 1st of July. So I was expecting a Monday announcement, just like I am with Charlie Taylor going to Southampton, but we'll get into that again later in the show. Obviously, we spoke about that yesterday. But anyway, Sam Ball's officially a Burnley player and he's obviously said his first words. The club have released some videos and some articles on it. And this is what he said about signing for Burnley. He said, I'm very happy to be here and I'm ready to show myself. Now, I chose Burnley because it's a historic club with a good fan base and it was the right choice for me. The club, the fans, the stadium, the teammates, everything is a part of it. And I just felt good instantly and it felt like the right place for me. It's been a good first week in training. The coaches have been really good and everyone around me has helped me settle in already. So... Good little bit of insight there. He's obviously been here for a week. We just haven't been able to announce it, <clears throat> probably because of the contract things with PSV Eindhoven. But he's been here for a week, so he's already been training. Hopefully, he's, he's building his fitness up as well to the Burnley levels and stuff. So, yeah, really, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about him, but I'm still happy to get it over the line. It's the first one. Get that one done. And like I said, he does sound like a young, exciting prospect. Just a little bit of info, information about him, though. He is a right back. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll just tell you what he said himself, because I, I saw this on the BBC Lancashire Twitter. Um, he said in that video, I'm a right back. Going forward, I give assists and goals and also defensive. I'm strong. I want to help the team get the best results. So it sounds like he's an attack-minded fullback, because within that sentence... That was the first thing he mentioned. He mentioned going forward first, right? I'll try and do some due diligence on him over the weekend and have a look at what sort of player he is, potentially even like a, an information video. I'm not going to promise that because I don't know how busy I am this weekend, but we'll see. I will look at him and see if he's... Um, try and get more information on him and the type of player he is. But yeah, first signing, done. First official announcement, done. And it's uh, a good one. We've known about it for a while. We think it's a good one. Um, it's a young, exciting prospect. And hopefully it can, it can settle in to the Burnley squad pretty, pretty quickly. But obviously, we've had a, we've had a young Dutch fullback before. And we did pretty well with him. Back to the manager stuff now then. And there's been an interesting development, if you are of that persuasion, with the bookmakers. Now, it's not just the bookmakers, but let me, all, let me explain everything. Out of nowhere today... The, and I'm going to get his name wrong, but out of nowhere today, Casper Holmond, it's, it's, it's like that, the second one there underneath Craig Bellamy, it's that one. I have no idea how you, how you pronounce that, so I do apologise, especially if there's any Danish um, Burnley fans watching this, I'm sure there isn't, um, but I've, I've definitely butchered that. Casper Holmond, Casper Ka Hojulmand. But anyway, he is the current Denmark manager. He's literally at Euro 2024 now with the Denmark team, the team that the only team that scored against England so far in this tournament so far. Um, and he has come from absolutely nowhere, never mentioned or anything to be the bookies' favourite. When I took that screenshot, as you will see, 
he was actually the second favourite. But since taking that screenshot, which is less than an hour ago, he has now been backed into favourite. So we have a new favourite with the bookies, and it is the current Danish manager, Kasper Hjulmund, Hulmund, whatever. I'm going to try and I'm going to stop trying to pronounce that one. I'll just say Danish manager. But yeah, it's come from nowhere. And it is, well, it, actually, I'm just quickly getting it up. He's now joint favourite. So he probably will be favourite by the time I get around to posting this. But he has come from nowhere, as I've said, to be now the joint favourite. Now, what's interesting is, I'm not going to mention any names because he told me not to say anything. But now it's out there. Think it's okay for me to do this, but uh, a Swedish journalist who knows or was a reporter at the team that we've just taken their assistant from. I forgot, is it Kalmar? I forgot the name of the team off the top of my head straight away. Apologies if I've got that wrong. He messaged me on Tuesday saying, Just thinking about your manager, do you not think it's somebody who might be managing at Euro 2020 and that's why you've not announced it yet? And I put, I don't know, mate, why Why are you asking? Uh, do you know something? And he put, no, I don't know anything. I just think it's strange to announce the assistant manager before the manager. Then he put, maybe the current Danish manager, and then the name. And I said, what, do you know something? He said, no, just pure speculation. So I left it, and I'm like, mm, he's just guessing. And then somebody messages me today, like, have you, seen the, have you seen the bookies odds? This guy's come out of nowhere, and it all started putting it together in my head. And then I seen a few posts on Up The Clarets and on Twitter and people saying that, oh, this guy's told them this, you know, my nan's dog said this and that sort of thing. So we'll see if any of the, the stuff that's out there is is legit, if it's got any substance. There's no reports to tell you about other than he's come out of nowhere to be the second favourite. And like I said, people have spoke to people and said, well, this guy said this to that guy and stuff, and I've been on the receiving end of some of that. Somebody messaged me and said, this certain person said this to this certain person. So to me, it, it sounds legit. But I guess we'll see. Be interesting to see how Denmark get on in the Euros, because again, off the top of my head, apologies if, if, if this is correct, because remember... Not everything you see on Turfcast is true, but some of it is. They are playing Germany. I'll just I'll just get it up on my phone. They are they are playing Germany on Saturday night. So maybe just maybe because there's been a few like weird things as to why we're taking so long. If it's Scott Parker who's out of work or Craig Bellamy who's already at the club, why is it taking so long? There's been a few people, Sasha for example, saying. There's a, a random name in there that that's, that that is on the list, and they have spoken to, but we, they can't say the name just yet. Could this guy be the random name? I don't know. Again, this is just me thinking out loud. But anyway, speaking of Sasha, something he tweeted yesterday was that Burnley will be hoping to announce their new manager next week. And again, just me putting two and two together. If Denmark get knocked out on Saturday of the Euros, straight on a plane to Manchester, get that contract signed. And can we, maybe we can announce that, announce him next week or something. Again, just me thinking out loud, but out out loud. But the actual reports on this, there are none. It's just he's been backed in to the joint favourite, as I'm recording this, to the new manager job from absolutely nowhere. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Yesterday we mentioned Charlie Taylor going to Southampton. Now I said, look, this isn't a report. It's just stuff that's been told to me from people who were at the fixture release breakfast. And it was a prominent figure high up at Burnley Football Club telling everybody that. Well, it's been picked up today by the actual press. The Daily Mirror or Mirror Football, as a football coverage is called, have said Charlie Taylor is set to join Premier League new boy Southampton after leaving Burnley as a free agent. So Nothing new, really, but something of actual substance now, rather than just me saying this is what I've heard. To be fair, it ended up being legit, or it's looking like it ended up being legit. Um, and that was just part of... It wasn't necessarily a, an article, obviously, the tweet that I've just shown you. They do, like, a transfer roundup thing where pretty much anything that happens within the transfer world uh, just gets put on this blog, essentially, and they update it throughout the day. Like, I'm just going through it now. Done deal. Burnley announced first signing. Ten Hag, Man United talks continuing for stuff. Smith Rowe pushing for exit. So there wasn't actually a full-on article about it, but they did tweet about it, and they did put it 
in their transfer roundup article. So they've obviously seen something somewhere, whether it's come from our tweet, for example, or this video, or they've picked up on all the Southampton tweets or something, or maybe even the prominent figure at Burnley Football Club has spoken to them as well. Who knows? Because there's no smoke without fire. And I think with this one, there's, there's a lot of smoke. But in that, they say, Taylor set for Saints switch. Charlie Taylor is set to join Southampton on a free contract on Monday after being offered a two-year deal by the Premier League new boys. Taylor, 30, is out of contract at Turf, Mo at Turf Moor and had refused to accept Burnley's offer of fresh terms. After being a regular for the first five of his seven seasons at Burnley under Sean Dyche, he fell from favour under Vincent Company. The Clarets still hope to hang on to him after Company quit to take over at Bayern Munich last month, but Southampton can offer him a swift return to the Premier League. Taylor cost £5 million from Leeds in 2017 and made 220 appearances for the Clarets. So some people will feel like, oh, it's a shame he's leaving, especially when we offered him terms. Some people may even be disappointed with that. Fair enough. I think, I think, like I said yesterday, if he wants a new challenge, he wants a new challenge. Um, also, Mirror, if you do watch this for um, stories, that's not Charlie Taylor. <laughs> that's Jakob Brun Larsen. So, should probably do better with that. But yeah, uh, other than that, again, nothing new to add on what I said yesterday. But it's looking like it'll be Monday. Monday is, of course, the 1st of July. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yesterday. With, with that, I expected it to be announced next week at some point. But Monday, the 1st of July that's when you tend to see all the outer contract players announced at the new clubs because they can then sign the new contract. So yeah, it does look like Charlie Taylor will be leaving Burnley this summer and going to Southampton. Another official announcement from the club today, which again was something that we did mention yesterday, was that they have officially announced their new front of shirt sponsor as 96.com. In a tweet, Burnley Football Club said, we can confirm that 96.com will feature as the official front of shirt partner for both the men's and women's team as part of a two year deal now we did say yesterday that there were rumors that it will be another betting sponsor and 96.com are another betting sponsor that they're a global brand apparently according to their website i'm not sure you can you can put money on them uh, on the sports book in the uk i've not looked too much into it but it's it's one that does tend to be it tends to be the norm now. It was the same with... Uh, who did we have last year? They all blend into one. Uh, W88. Same with Fun88. It's not really a bookmaker in this country, but if you really wanted to and got a VPN, you could get onto it. Um, but apparently... Uh, I'll just try and find the, the bit in the in the Burnley Football Club article, but they do say, Burnley Football Club can confirm that 96.com will feature as the official front of, uh, front of shirt sponsor, a premium sports gaming entertainment platform with casino, virtual and online betting services has become part of the industry's fastest growing platforms. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just trying to find the bit where it will say, it will basically, the club have said it's the most lucrative betting sponsorship ever, but they've obviously worded it better than that. Uh, 96.com, I mean, here we go, 96.com, I'll put this on your screen actually, 96.com have invested a record commercial fee for Burnley FC while playing in the championship. Now, does that mean, when I first read that this morning actually, and I've immediately changed my mind after reading it again, when I read that this morning, I thought that meant official, like officially the best, the most highest paid betting, uh, sorry, the most highest paid sponsor we've ever had. But the fact that it says while playing in the championship now tells me it's the most money they've made on a sponsorship while being in the championship. I don't know how I got that wrong this morning. Um, so it's not the most lucrative ever, according to that, unless they've just worded it horrifically. But that tells me it's the most money we've made off a sponsor while we've been in the championship. But when I read it this morning, I read it in the sense of why even while we are in the championship, but not basically despite being in the championship not while in the championship I don't know how I've got that that wrong if I'm being honest with you um, you might take it a different way but it's it's good to see I mean look I, I'm not going to get into it too much because I mentioned it yesterday fully transparent I do work for a betting company just again to get that out there if you didn't see the video yesterday but I don't personally have many issues with us using a betting sponsor I know some people who watch the shows regularly and listen to the podcast regularly and who tweet me they have my personal number a particular person regularly despises the betting companies and speaks out uh, against the betting companies and, uh, and stuff like that fair play like if some people have issues with it 
I can't sit there on my iOS when I work for a betting company, can I really? So I don't have too many issues with it. Some people want us to take a moral stand, like I think Luton do, and a few other clubs do, like they refuse to have betting sponsors on their stuff. But why? It's, it's, we're a business at the end of the day, and I know some people shouldn't say it shouldn't just be about the money, but we're a business at the end of the day, and, and why create a disadvantage towards us by being morally strong when we could be taking more money. Again, you might think, what a what a poor way to look at things, Joe. There's a lot more to it than that. People have died from betting addictions and stuff, and I get it. That's just the way I see it. The Burnley Football Club is a business, a business that might not be in the best position at the minute after the amount of money they spent last year. Again, I don't think it's as bad as some people like to make out. We've got a lot of sellable assets and things like that, but I'm not going to get into that now. But I just think it would be creating a disadvantage for ourselves if we just said, no. Nope, don't want that five million quid for the year. We're going to take under a grand off Holland's Pies again. I mean, I loved Holland's Pies. It were a great sponsor, as was classing, uh, classing? classic football shirts. They were two very good sponsors, Ensley as well. But I just think it's the way of the world these days. We're playing in the Sky Bet Championship, for God's sake. There's not much moral high ground we can take. I mean, well, there is. But again, for me, I'd rather them take... I'd rather them take the most money. But let me know what you think in the comments below. We could maybe have a debate about it. In fact, just to give you all some news, the debate shows are coming back. We're going to be doing a live debate show on Sunday morning. I'm not going to give you an exact time just yet. Probably going to be 10.30, but that might change. I will create the live. And if you're new to the channel, there's a lot of new people to the channel who, who watch these these new shows that haven't watched any of the stuff we do before, come and join in on one of the debates. You might like it. You can put your comments in on the chat. Like I said, we do it live. We're one of the only channels that do. In fact, we are the only channel that does regular lives, regular debate lives, where you can join in. You can set the tone. You can discuss what we talk about, or you can respond to stuff that we're talking about. It'll be me, Sam, and Andrew at the minute. I'm hoping to get a few more responses off some people as well, but we will be back with the live shows on Sunday morning and then back with the new shows on Monday. But I will wrap this actual show up here. Now, like I said, quite a lot to fit in. It's actually been quite a long show, so apologies if you've you finished your brew and you're waiting for me to, to, to wrap up. But yeah, Sharande Sambo, officially a Burnley player, new favourite for the bookies at the for, for the manager's role at the bookies and a brand new sponsor, front of shirt sponsor at Burnley Football Club is 96.com, a betting firm which has left some people pretty annoyed, but also some people not so much. But let me know in the comments below what you think about all of today's stories, and I'll be back with the new show on Monday, and as I've said, we'll be doing a live debate on YouTube and on Facebook on Sunday morning. So if you're if you're used to the debate shows and you've liked them, you've watched them all along, again, feel free to come along. Please do come along. And if you're one of the new people who's just got to the show, just subscribe to the channel, sorry, through these news channels and you've never been involved in one of the debate shows and you want to see what it's about, come and have a look, get your comments in and we respond to pretty much all of them unless it's like really, really busy and we struggle. But we normally try and put every comment on screen and respond to every single comment. Apart from when Sam's having a rant because he likes a rant, does Sam? But yeah. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everybody for I said listening. This isn't the podcast this time. But thanks everyone for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'll be back with the new show on Monday. <laughs>